Hi, welcome to Why These Notes. My name is Mark, and uh, up until now we've been representing uh, the different musical intervals as lengths of string uh, in a spiral form on a clock face. Um, I really like representing them as circles. I think it shows you very clearly what's going on. Um, as far as I know, I'm the only person that represents notes as circles. Uh, but this is our length of string here. This is Do, right? Do is the entire length of string, or half of it, or a quarter of it. Uh, again, any time a number doubles or halves, it's the same note, right? So this is Do, this half is Do, this is Do, just in different octaves. This is a lower Do, this is a higher Do, and this is a higher Do. Uh, we can represent Do using any number we want, 1, 24, 36, whatever. Um, but generally it shows up as one, two, four, eight. Um, but really what's important is, is this one to two ratio. As soon as you see the one to two ratio, uh, you know it's the same note as um, a different note. So moving on from Do, which again is the full length of string and you know, halves and quarters, uh, we get So. So is two thirds of the length of string, right? This would be two thirds. This is the full length of string. Um, so, but instead of representing Do as one, as a circle, one to three, uh, it's much closer and cleaner to represent it as two to three. And you can see visually this two to three ratio. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's got, you know, just a slight amount of complexity to it. Um, and I, I think that really makes it, you know, it's cool to be able to look at the notes this way. Uh, now, you may remember that I say that Fa is really an upside down Do, and what I mean by that is uh, to get from So 2 to 3 to the next Do uh, 4, right, this is the next Do, uh, it's the same sort of relationship just turned inside out, right? So I could have represented this as 1, but uh, Do is 1, but I chose to represent it as 2, and Do can be represented as 4 just as easily. Um, but it's the 2 to 3 ratio that's so, and then the 3 to 4 ratio that's fa. Now, these are called the perfect intervals. Uh, and by perfect, it means that they don't really want to move from where they are. You know, if you've shifted one just slightly, you know, so it was instead of uh, 3 to 4, it was 3 to 4.1, uh, you immediately made it much more complicated. Uh, you know, the, the, the 2 to 3 ratio, the 3 to 4 ratio doesn't want to shift from where it is. It's kind of perfect the way it is, uh, you know, and this simplicity, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't want to shift around too much. And, and when you move it, it, it gets much more complicated very quickly. Um, the other thing, just remember that so is uh, a 3. Uh, and that's going to be important in a second. Um, so the next place to go, right, we were already at 2 to 3 and 3 to 4. The next logical place to go is 4 to 5, right? 4 to 5 is Mi, which is the major third, and 5 to 6 is Me, which is the minor third. And you can see these are a little bit more complex. These are a little richer, um, you know, and if at a glance, if you confused, you know, the, the major third for the minor third, you know, you'd sort of be forgiven. And that's why uh, this is, either one of these is the third. Um, and uh, there's just the major version and the minor version, and the fact that they can move around makes them imperfect intervals. And um, this sort of rich complexity here is what allows them to move around, right? They don't complain as much if you if you subtly shift them as the uh, perfect intervals do. And you may remember uh, I just said that the so interval is a 2 to 3 ratio and uh, it shows up here as in the, in the uh, 4 to 6 ratio. In fact, if I go back here, uh, this 2 to 3, so this 2 to 4 is an octave and this, uh, sorry, this 2 to 4 is an octave, uh, I can prove to you that a so plus a do, so, sorry, a so plus a fa equals a do, right? So it's 2 thirds, right? 2, 3 times 
three, four, right? This is so, uh, this is, sorry, so, and this is fa equals, it's uh, two to three is six, three to four is 12, equals one over two. So this is a so plus a fa equals do, right? And we actually just multiply them together. Um, so I could do the same thing here, uh, a me, right, plus a me, four, five, six. Uh, this, this is the two to three ratio here, uh, four to six. A me plus a me equals uh, so. And I can do that here if my marker works. Four, five times five, six equals 20. And that's 30. And that's two to three. So uh, adding a me plus a me equals uh, so. And you could do this either with the me on the bottom, with the four, five coming first, or the me on the bottom with the five, six coming first. Uh, but it gets a little complicated because a two to three ratio from five would be 7.5, right? 7.5, my marker will work for me, 7.5, uh, which is clumsy. So we multiply it uh, to get a different ratio so we get like, whole numbers in there. Uh, but this is the major chord, four, five, six. All right, here's the four, five of the major third, and the five, six of the minor third, and here is the four, six, or two to three ratio of so. And the major chord, I think, is quite beautiful to look at. I mean, it's really um, got just enough complexity in it to make it interesting. Um, I, you know, I mean, I, I would sort of cut this out of wood and hang it on my wall. It, it you know, it, it's just really quite beautiful. Um, and you never really get lost in it. There's never a sense where you don't have this kind of harmony. Um, and, and it's really quite a beautiful visual harmony, I think, um, compared to, for example, the uh, minor chord. Uh, so you remember the minor chord was five, six, the, the minor third on the bottom, right? Uh, so here's the five, six ratio, the minor on the bottom. And here's the major, this is the uh, four, five ratio here on the top. And here is the one to 1.5 so ratio. And, um, it's just uh, so much more complex, right? This, uh, visually, it's so much more complicated than this. Um, uh, you know, I, I kind of attribute the, uh, people say that the major chord is happy and the minor chord is sad, and uh, scientists have been able to, uh, you know, they, they get people together and they have them listen to a piece of music that's in a major key and they, you know, or a piece of music that's in a minor key, and they say, you know, which one's major, which one's minor, and people who aren't musicians can't tell. But then they say which one's happy and which one's sad, and they're able to tell it, you know, with a pretty good, uh, pretty good percentage of the time. So I attribute the quote-unquote happiness of the major chord to its relative simplicity and beauty. Uh, the minor chord is much more complicated, uh, you know, by comparison. And that, I think, is what makes the minor chord sad, uh, is, is the complexity to it. So, to quickly recap, Do is a uh, 1 to 2 ratio, right? And again, this is a piece of string, you know, a piece of string vibrates, you know, in a complicated way. It vibrates in halves and thirds and quarters and so on. Um, and we use circles to represent this. Uh, the fifth uh, musical so is a two to three ratio of vibration. Uh, you know, two, uh, if you have two lengths of string and one's two thirds the length of the other, and they both have the same tension on them, and so on, uh, there would be one would be so and one would be do. Uh, to get from so to do, we discover fa as three quarters, and I've proved this mathematically. 
And then uh, there's the major third, Mi, and the minor third, Me. Uh, and again, it, Mi and Me put together equals a, uh, a So. And again, they are a little bit more complicated. They could be either major or minor. Uh, uh, and this makes them what we call imperfect intervals, that they can sort of be in either position. And finally, the major chord, as represented by 4, 5, 6, is happy because it's simple. And the minor chord, represented by 10, 12, 15, is just so much more complicated uh, that uh, people associate it with sadness or, or complex emotions, where people associate this with simple emotions. So this has been Why These Notes. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, you know, it's a little bit of a complicated topic, but uh, I think visually being able to see the notes uh, and then associating them back to, uh, to you know, the music that you hear is really kind of an interesting experiment. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know. And this has been Why These Notes. Bye-bye.